Radiation is all around us. There's no escaping it. It's below us, around us, and above us. Even in space, it's unavoidable. Radiation has been here since the universe began. It was present when dinosaurs roamed the Earth and will remain for eternity. Radiation comes in many forms. Solar radiation from the sun, including UV rays. Radio frequency, RF, radiation from Wi-Fi and phones. And microwave radiation from communication towers. You can't see, hear or smell radiation. If you think you can taste it, you are already in serious trouble. Massive exposure to something like cobalt-60 or plutonium, which you had no earthly right to be exposed to, would result in lethal radiation poisoning. It would be the last thing you'd ever taste, as acute radiation syndrome takes its toll during your final days or weeks spent in incredible agony. You can see evidence of radiation if you build something like a cloud chamber or outlay a not inconsiderable amount of cash for a radiation detector, where you can also hear its presence through a small piezoelectric speaker. You can also capture the effects of strong radiation in photos, whether on film or digital. But remember, if you're close enough to take a picture or video of something emitting that much radiation, you probably shouldn't be there in the first place. Whilst to my Russian-made dosimeter, which I bought a few years ago, uses a Geiger Muller tube, there are also other small digital radiation detectors and scintillation detectors. My previous videos use measurements in sieverts per hour, but we're going to switch to counts per minute, CPM, for this video. Well, I meant to film this the other day, but the lady of the house ate the props. So using this slightly worn banana, let's see how radioactive it is. What do you think? Radioactive? Yes or no? So there's our background radiation. Check the banana. Try peeling it. Not really. I had the smoke detector next to it. Sorry about the joke. Virtually nothing. You'd need to sleep in a whole truck full of bananas to even worry about it, and even then it would be nothing to worry about. Outtake. First one of the year. that much. How about three kilograms of Tasmanian prawns? No, not really. Whee! I live on the west side of Brisbane, but regardless of where you live, background radiation varies slightly but is generally harmless. It comes from the earth, building materials, and even the air around you. For most people, radiation exposure in everyday environments and workplaces is not a significant concern. Okay, so out on Studio A, which is my rear deck at home, you can see the average is about six counts per minute. That will vary depending on where you are. I 
one. You could be anywhere. So this is just on the grass nearby. You can see it's already a minor difference. But move it a little bit further. It's like you've got another hot spot. But it's only minor. So there may be a bit of granite or something somewhere. Or some runoff from the roof. Well, I just thought I'd check out something outdoors and I see there's a large mountain over there. Let's check it out. Wow, that's going on. Oh, it's T-Rox. There oh. you go, mate. Oh, <laughs> you've got the genius detector with you. Well, yeah, I, no, I thought I heard something yeah, beeping. Yeah, well, the, it was going right off. <laughs> I know how it feels. Oh. No worries. Good to see you, Steve. You too, mate. What brings you to my park? Well, your direction, basically. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look to see if something's radioactive. Well, we already we know are. the sample I bought's radioactive. That's Definitely. Right. But so I reckon these trees are, Steve. I think they're radioactive. Look at them. They're just weird. Well, I swear I see them glowing at night. I'm going to go and check them out. Okay. Skip across to T-Rox's channel, and he'll cover Brisbane. Well, you know, his shadow will. <laughs> A few jobs that do have increased radiation exposure include, but are not limited to, radiologists and nuclear medicine technicians, airline crew who experience increased cosmic radiation at high altitudes. Cosmic radiation is primarily gamma radiation and high energy charged particles, not just alpha or beta, and high energy protons and heavy ions, and military personnel working with nuclear submarines or weapons. The most fascinating type of radiation for many people, including myself, is ionising radiation. And that's the type we'll focus on today. Ionising radiation includes alpha, beta and gamma radiation, as well as x-rays and neutron radiation. Here's how they differ. Alpha radiation, heavily ionising but weakly penetrating, for example stopped by paper or skin. Beta radiation, moderately ionising and more penetrating, stopped by plastic or aluminium. Gamma radiation, highly penetrating but less ionising, requires lead or concrete shielding. All types can ionise atoms, which is why they can damage living tissue and DNA. As a bonus fact, over 2,000 nuclear tests were conducted globally between 1945 and 1996. Many of these tests released radioactive isotopes into the atmosphere, contributing to fallout. While these tests have largely stopped due to international treaties, traces of strontium-90, a radioactive isotope which has a half-life of 28.8 years, remain in every living organism, including plants, and in our bones, even in newborn babies. These tests aimed primarily at developing weapons of mass destruction, how we could blow each other up and annihilate the planet thousands of times over, serve as a stark reminder of humanity's destructive potential. So thanks for that, fellas. Oh, here's t rox as a meter next to mine, comparing his sample. Check out his video because uh, it's a little, a little bit more funny than my my comment, isn't it, T-Rox? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there we go. And it's a sample of what? In case people don't see it. Uh, the uranium bead. So it's a bit of U two three eight. It's yes. not anything exciting. It's exciting enough. <laughs> I've made several videos in the past about radiation. Check out my radiation playlist for those, including testing food, and even myself for the rapidly decaying presence of radioactive iodine soon after a medical scan, as well as predominantly alpha particles radiating from things like the radium-painted dial of an old World War II Liberator bomber clock that sat a mere few feet away from my face for 20 years. Holy shit. 
You're joking. This thing's definitely not staying in my office anymore. And how a few sheets of ordinary paper was enough to block those particles. It's not unlikely that you have in your own home, maybe as a hand-me-down from your parents or grandparents, things like uranium glass, also known as Vaseline glass, or a uranium glazed plate. If you do, rest assured, it's safe enough to keep on display. But don't actually eat from them, as the act of scratching them with a knife and fork is enough to potentially disturb microscopic particles and alpha radiation is something that you don't want travelling around in your body. Just ask the radium girls, as they became known, who decades ago used to wet the fine tip of paintbrushes they used with their mouths. Do you know what's wrong with me? Absolutely nothing. You're healthy as a horse. Where do you work? American Radium. We're dial painters. We believe that exposure to radium can cause devastating tissue damage. <laughs> radium is... Good for you, everyone knows that. Oh, that's right, you can't ask them, as they're all dead. Mostly due to the horrendous destruction of their jaw bones. American radium is denying the harmful effects of radium. They could drag this out for years. We don't have years. The buried bodies to this day remain radioactive. So there's T Rox exploring the radioactivity in this area. What a radioactive area it is. As this is not a 10 hour video, we'll just be scratching the surface of the scientific aspect of radiation. But for clarity, for want of a better word. There is no standard measurement of radiation, as different units are used for various purposes. In 1896, physicist Henri Becquerel discovered rocks that contained uranium. Since continuing his study of radiation, Madame Curie, along with her husband Pierre, in 1898, radiation has been measured using units like the Curie, Rondogen, RAD and REM, with modern units such as the Becquerel and Gray. Other radiation measurements used include, forgive my pronunciation, Coulomb per kilogram, disintegrations per minute, Becquerel per square metre, counts per minute, counts per second, and millisieverts and sieverts per hour, which provide more accurate and specific assessments. If you've ever broken a bone and needed an x-ray, you've been exposed to radiation, albeit for usually only nanoseconds. The main thing that usually matters is the accumulated dose during such exposures. Grays are still commonly used in CT scans and other forms of radiation therapy. The gray is the standard unit for measuring the absorbed dose of radiation, meaning the amount of radiation energy deposited into a given mass of tissue. Since CT scans involve high doses of x-rays to create detailed images, the gray, or its subunit the milligray, is used to quantify the radiation dose delivered to the patient. A year ago I had to have a CT scan of my shoulder and let's just say the operator made several attempts to find the right spot to put in the cortisone injection. During this time, I was exposed more times than I would have cared to be by x-rays. When I received the resulting report, I did a rough calculation, and that equated to 32 years of background radiation within those few seconds. So I was really happy with that. Not... The old style of smoke detectors contained a Mericium 241 with a half-life of 432 years. The new type of smoke detectors don't contain any radioactive elements and are also better for avoiding false alarms. So if you do still have the old type of smoke detector in your home, 
Whilst they won't do you any harm, you may as well replace them with the new type, which aren't too expensive. Just don't go throwing the old ones into the recycle bin, as there's no point adding to radiation levels on recycled goods. This is one example where it's probably best to just let it end up buried as landfill. Always check your smoke detectors monthly by pressing the test button for a few seconds. When batteries need replacing, don't cheap out. Use only alkaline or lithium batteries. It could save the life of yourself or your loved ones. Thanks to extensive shielding and the inverse square law, it's why you could drive past a nuclear reactor without any risk. These reactors use thick concrete, lead and water to block radiation. Concrete absorbs gamma rays and neutrons. Lead adds extra gamma protection. And water slows down neutrons, making it an excellent moderator. Additionally, the inverse square law states that radiation intensity decreases with the square of the distance from the source. Doubling the distance reduces exposure to one quarter. Tripling it reduces exposure to one ninth and so on. So in other words, the further you move away, the safer you are. Nearly <laughs> fell. It's all there. It's not the look at Oh look, who's this? It's the amazing Steve hey, Mac. Hey, Mac. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Hey, Derek. How you We're in a park here. Uh, what a coincidence, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's uncanny. Uncanny. It's uncanny. as if it was uncanny. planned. We were just talking about radiation. Were we? Now it's nothing to be scared of. No. At all, really. Not at all. So, I'm more uh, scared of that thing on the stick. I won't make this political. We won't <laughs> talk about Peter Dutton. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's been standing a bit too close to a nuclear reactor myself. But anyway, we'll, we'll see. You know, it's, uh, it's ageing. Why do you think I'm wearing a hat, says Tony? <laughs> anyway, till next time, folks. Geology rocks. Keep rocking. T-Rocks, out. And Steve Mack. So really, there's not much to worry about where you live. Unless you live near a nuclear reactor. Very close, actually. So, keep eating your bananas. There's no lethal level of potassium in them that'll kill you. Get a little bit of sun. Not too much, though. And you'll be fine. Cheers. I always struggle with that. I never read the instructions and I asked it the first time. <laughs> uh, clever. <laughs>